Friends, welcome to part five of The Great Reset. You'll remember that from September 2020 through to December, I released four uh, programs uh, concerning The Great Reset, exposing Klaus Schwab, the fourth industrial revolution, The Great Reset, and many of the things connected to it with technology, uh, transhumanism, the move towards a socialist government and a worldwide government, and many other things. I'm not going to go back over that, but I'm going to go a bit further here on this great reset in this new year. It's been five months now since I dealt with any of this, and I'm going to plunge right in here and start with part five, quoting directly from Klaus Schwab, shaping the future of the fourth industrial revolution, a guide to building a better world. This book was published in 2018, and I'm gonna quote directly from chapter 12. Its title is Neurotechnologies. It's 2030, and you're sitting in front of a screen when a pop-up grabs your attention. Your concentration levels are low, it announces. You realize you've been staring blankly at the screen for the last few minutes, stifling a yawn, you click the link to analyze the recent readouts from a system monitoring your brain waves and assessing your real time mental state. It recommends you sleep, but you still have hours of work to complete. Just one more neurotropic pill, perhaps, to push through to 3 a.m. in the morning. Friends are starting to say that over reliance on chemical enhancers is harmful, but you are constantly being monitored for signs of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. No problem as yet. That's how Mr. Schwab opens up his chapter on neurotechnologies. Let me dive in here directly. I don't have time for a full review of the past year. If you have the ear, your ear to the ground, you understand what is going on. Was this a health crisis? Is it a health crisis? Why are we here and where are we going? In the midst of this great crisis that has come to our world, our world has changed forever. There is no doubt about that. Just two weeks before this health crisis began, before March last year, my wife was diagnosed with cancer. In June last year, she was uh, diagnosed as terminal and given six months to live. And so, right at the heart in the midst of this crisis, we were in and out of the hospital on a constant basis. I walked into that hospital when it was almost utterly empty. I'd never seen that like that before. And yet we were meant to be in a pandemic. The cancer unit was even shut down all throughout most of uh, these shutdowns. So new patients could not come in. We have met people, young people, 16 year olds, because they could not get medical treatment, now have terminal diagnosis of hearing and other different types of illness. In the midst of this past year, there's been an utter suppression on news items in the media, online. There's been an increasing suppression of any divergent voice, any question, any analyzing, any just raising issues or problems. You see, this past year has not stifled or stopped the health crisis. It's created an enormous health crisis, which we are yet to face. Cancer patients are gonna be through the roof. Every type of illness is going to be through the roof. It is a remarkable thing. We haven't stopped the crisis. We have manufactured with locking down society an unbelievable medical problem that no one is dealing with. Now we're faced with enforced vaccinations. Unless you take the vaccination, you could lose your job, be stopped from traveling and many other things. At the present time, they estimate maybe 12% of our world's been vaccinated. Maybe 50% of the adults in the US, 52% of the population in the United Kingdom and 60% in Israel. The mRNA um, vaccine actually is different than any other previous vaccinations. It's moving into the realm of biotech. It's a new type 
of medication. Our world is changing. And I believe this year denotes an utter shift. You see, we heard daily, and it's been, we've been bombarded with it. Every death, every illness, everything going on concerning COVID. But yet there's been an utter stifling of the consequences of this supposed cure. I've heard far worse things about the cure than I ever did, did the illness. There's blood clots, misdiagnosis, deaths, terrible things happening, but yet you're not allowed to speak about it. Friends, that ought to alarm you as we come to this fourth, uh, sorry, this fifth part of the Great Reset. Let me get into this. One of the five main parts of this book of Klaus Schwab is altering the human being. That is the whole area of this teaching, altering the human being, published three years ago. In chapter 11, he deals with biotechnologies. In chapter 12, he deals with neurotechnologies. In chapter 13, he deals with virtual and augmented realities. When he wrote his first book, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, in 2016, all about the Fourth Industrial Revolution, he said that he coined the term, and he said that many times, and he said at the beginning, when he published this book in 2016, it seemed at first as if it was merely science fiction, but he defined what the Fourth Industrial Revolution is. It is characterized by a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. Friends, what I'm gonna deal with here is the very heart of the fourth industrial revolution. What Schwab is promoting and what all of our governments have now fallen in line with. And you need to be aware of this. If you have any questions about the past year, if you're unsure about what's coming through the medical profession, do you, if you have any doubts, I'm going to give you enough to think about in this. First, the first of three points, biotechnologies. That's the whole realm of technology in connection with the body. Schwab again in this book, he says biotechnologies will change the future and they will change us. They will challenge our understanding of what it means to be human. What's he talking about as far as biotechnologies? It is the integration of technologies with biological tissue. In other words, our physical body joining technology to it. He said technology that alters biological systems. In his book here, he talks about manipulating DNA about gene uh, genome modification, about modifying biology by deliberate design, designer babies changing the germline of complex organizations such as humans themselves. He talks about intervening in human biology and about altering the very building blocks of life itself. This is the first technology I'm gonna deal with here, biotechnologies. It deals with the whole realm of biology or the body. It means that which is, has life or is living or has a body. It means to intervene in and assert control over the whole biological realm. It's not restricted to the human body. It means the environment, agriculture, and even human health, as well as animals bringing about, and this is what Schwab said, that this realm would bring about a civilizational leap for humankind. When he begins to deal with this in his books and other uh, writings, he talks about genetically modifying the body. And if you know anything, this has been going on a long time in nature um, uh, previous to this. There was gen genetically modified mosquitoes let loose in our world. Gene editing can now change an entire species, even forever. One recent newspaper report spoke about Bill Gates' uh, back company releasing over 100,000 genetically modified mosquitoes 
biological engineering already takes place in agriculture. We have seen how they change the food, especially in America, modifying the very gene structure of food and of corn and wheat and many other things. The human genome modification has already taken place in China. And I'm sure in labs secretly, where we don't even know the half of what is going on. But back to the issue here, Schwab talks about two areas when he comes to these biotechnologies, health care and agriculture. And agriculture, he says, this is gonna be the key. This new technology will be the key to feed the world in the next 50 years, to reduce poverty and using genetically modified seeds and foods is going to open up all of this provision and provide for an entire generation. In order to do that, we've got to use gene editing in food. Well, we know already there's been disasters in this with wheat, the Roundup weed killer and the big uproar that come out of that. We don't have time to go there, but I want to concentrate on what he says about healthcare. Remember this three years ago, Schwab says this, that these biotechnologies are going to impact the entire realm of healthcare for humanity. He speaks here in this book about precision medicine or PM medicine. In other words, it's tailored to each unique individual. It identifies their problems. He pre uh, it predicts their illnesses. It monitors any uh, uh, likelihood of heart attack or strokes or anything else. He says in here about modifying biology by deliberate design. In other words, healthcare, medication is going to, it is going to move into this realm of affecting the biology of man, tampering with, with the whole germline. He says in here in this book about changing the germline of complex organizations such as humans, joining biotech with digital tech. And that between these two realms, from your body into technology, information will be passed between the two. This is biotechnology, and it's going to change the whole medical realm. This is what he was saying. It, biotechnology is aimed certainly primarily at the bodies of humans. We've heard for a few years now about the internet of things, everything becoming intelligent, of computers and of chips going into everything from phones to cars to who knows what else. But now in here, Schwab talks about the internet of bodies or IOB. What is the internet of bodies? It's when you connect the internet to the bodies and the information is joined. It's the monitoring of human bodies, collecting health um, metrics and information and other personal information on a constant basis. It is all about transmitting this personal data over the internet to your medical staff who can then keep an eye or a computer actually regulates what happens in your human body. The World Economic Forum actually talks about digital medicine and this whole realm of sending information to your phone, your iCloud or your care team. This is the new scenario for medication. This is where we're moving to. And they're very explicit in these books, very explicit. The World Economic Forum, on their website for June 2020, just one year ago. Listen to the title. It's now time for IOB, Internet of the Body. This is what they say. Collecting our physical data through devices that can be implanted, swallowed, or worn on our body, generating huge, huge amounts of health-related information. You see, the IOB centers on the human body and health. It's how the internet gets connected to the body. And this is going to be the nat next natural step for the entire global health system. This is where they want to go. They've been talking about it. But COVID gives us the opportunity. Well, we're already halfway there. 
They talk about having smart watches, smart phones, smart toothbrushes, smart um, hair brushes, smart clothes. All these things send information back to the internet, and yet it's not in your body as yet. It opens the gate to a new era of effective monitoring and treatment. I mean, keeping an eye on you constantly of your most intimate personal physical issues. This whole medical realm is gonna cover everything from vaccines to germ therapy. Going further in this same World Economic Forum article, it says, in 2017, the US Federal Drug Administration approved the first use of digital pills in the United States. Digital pills contain tiny ingestible sensors as well as medicine. Once swallowed, the sensor is activated in the patient's stomach and it then transmits data to their smartphone or to other uh, device. They go further and say this could prove crucial in fighting the present coronavirus pandemic, keeping track of symptoms that help us to stop the spread of infection and quickly detect new cases. And so you see, we are starting with this whole COVID remedy and how to deal with it medically is opening up a Pandora's box. I mean, the genie is escaping in the midst of all of this. The World Economic Forum in a briefing paper from July, 2020, just last year, called Shaping the Future of the Internet of Bodies. It talks about new challenges of technology governance. Quote, with an unprecedented number of sensors attached to, implanted within, or ingested into human bodies to monitor, analyze, and even modify human bodies and behavior, immediate actions are needed to address the ethical and legal considerations that come with the IOB. This brings us into a whole unique realm. It goes further. It says recent advancements in the internet of things are transforming the human body into a new technology platform. Did you hear that? This is what Schwab, the World Economic Forum, all the rich people of the earth, all the experts of this generation that are motivating the whole health answer to this crisis. This is what they believe, that the human body is becoming the new technical platform. They go further in saying that this is going to uh, be taken into the realm of not only health, but also work, education, and entertainment. In the realm of work, it'll track miners underground. And of course, we would think that's a good idea. It will involve brain wear devices that can measure airline pilots' uh, awareness and alertness as they fly. It, it can monitor drivers' fatigue levels as they drive down the road. Do you see how this is coming into the work realm as well? And then they're gonna need a whole new set of regulations to govern this worldwide. Regulations may fail to cover data protection, information that is sensitive or private, and there's already a lack of standard surrounding the security of data information. And this opens um, for a whole newly created set of regulations to govern this worldwide issue. The UN are coming in talking about the creating of global governance to control all the legislation and laws that are gonna cover joining technology to these bodies, these physical bodies. So that's the first area he deals with. The second one is neurotechnologies. And believe me, all of this has everything to do with the past year, absolutely everything. If you don't see that, you're fast asleep. I wanna promise you. Number two, chapter 12 in this book is neurotechnologies. That is to do with the human brain, technologies that will connect with the brain. Schwab says here again in this book, the category 
Neurotechnologies describes a wide set of approaches that provide powerful insights into the workings of the human brain, allowing us to extract information, expand our senses, alter our behavior, and interact with the world. This may sound like science fiction, but it is not. Neuroscience is slowly leaving the medical and scientific labs to penetrate our daily lives. The field of neurotechnology is maturing rapidly. It represents an opportunity to create an entire new system of values in the fourth industrial revolution, while raising significant risks and governance concerns. Now this realm of neurotechnologies relating to the brain, Schwab actually says it includes drugs and pharma, as well as digital technology. So we see it's these two realms that he's talking about here. And I believe there's a close connection between medical drugs and technology, a very close connection. He says in this book, remember that opening statement, the guy in front of his computer getting tired? He said, just one more nootropic pill, just one more. What is a nootropic pill? I'd never heard of it before, before Schwab informed me. But I went looking, and this, this is new. This is new. The word nootropic actually means to turn, bend, or shape the mind of man. So it's drugs that change the consciousness of man. It's called smart drugs. We've had smartphones, smart cars. Now we've got smart drugs. They also call them cognitive enhancers. They say that they heighten concentration, attention, and maybe even memory, that they could possibly improve function, creative ability, alter the brain chemistry through drugs. And Schwab says we already have it in alcohol, coca leaves, tobacco, or even magic mushrooms. All these things are what man used in days of old. And then coming much closer uh, to other drugs in our own uh, generation. But Schwab paints a picture of a young man in 2030 with his open computer that's monitoring his brain and his body all of the time, his entire health system. And you know what it's saying? Just one more pill. Here you have the union of pharma medical drugs with technology and the human body, and he paints the picture for 2030. When I started to look at these nootropic pills, I was shocked what I found. You, you'll find that back in all those in Silicon Valley, all, all the great titans of Silicon Valley ha, have used nootropics. It is widespread. Some people in Silicon Valley say no businessman, no new um, adventurous tech up and rising businessman. No billionaire does not go this way. Some of those young experts take eight to 12 pills a day. They call this taking medication or drugs, a mixture of herbal remedies and some other things. They call it biohacking or DIY biology. It's a union of tablets with upgrading our bodies with tech. In other words, those medications stimulate the brain. And for many of these, it's enhanced them to create remarkable things in Silicon Valley. In fact, drugs has been behind Silicon Valley in a remarkable way. But also these nootropics have invaded the homes of people all over the world, offices, universities. In England, there's a high percentage of young people on nootropics just to study well, study long, to perform better, to have greater intelligence. What a, what a disaster we're dealing with. We know that LSD was used um, by many of these uh, tech giants as well. And uh, those in Silicon Valley, they, they experimented with LSD and instantly got inspired with ideas about new tech inventions. It suddenly come to them under the influence of LSD or nootropics or whatever else. I hope you're alarmed by this because I certainly am. 
Now, the COVID-19 vaccine is the next generation of vaccine. But listen what they're doing at the minute. They want to move from a jab, an injection, to a tablet or to a pill. From February this year all the way through to June, they were talking about moving to a pill that we can easily take at home. And they expect this new uh, vaccine pill to be available by the end of 2021 or, the, uh, or early 2022. And so we see this new medical technology coming in through pills that is going to be connected into the internet. It's going to be biochemical. It is different than anything we've faced before. In science fiction novels, going back more than 100 years, we have this same theme. Science fiction is closely connected to drug use. H.G. Wells in 1901 wrote his book, The New Accelerator, about a mad scientist creating a drug that gives him limitless brain power and slows down the world around him. Or what about his good friend Huxley, who wrote, who wrote Brave New World in 1932? It talks there in that novel about governments preventing people from speaking freely and openly and thinking for themselves. So what do they do? By giving them SOMA, a legal drug that is available for every person every day. It, it is the future Ritalin. And we, we know that Huxley believed that it would come, all of this would come about. A controlled world government using drugs would come about in the 21st century. We really are there. If you want to look at LSD, the CIA, how the Nazis come into that, just study Operation Paperclip for yourself in YouTube, and you'll get an eye-opener how the CIA in America experimented with LSD. So did the British Army in England. They were using drugs to experiment on the brain, on the mind of man. And so this is a whole realm of neurotechnologies, and Schwab knows that. But let me go on to the technical side of this. Neurotechnologies are technologies coming into it. Again, quoting from his book, neurotechnologies help us to better influence consciousness and thought and understand many activities of the brain. What is this? It's decoding what we are thinking. This is what he says in this book, influencing the brain and thinking to correct errors and enhance the function of the brain to dramatically expand all of our five senses through using neurotechnologies. Drugs is only a minor part of that, but they want to connect the internet to this. It's going beyond our normal function of senses. And he says that this will drive an industry, an industry of human enhancement right across the world. What are new neurotechnologies? It's when men intrude into the private space of our brains, allowing us to extract information from them, alter behavior, influencing your thinking. And he says here, quote, the ability to access a person's innermost thoughts and influence, uh, his influences or her thinking. He gives an example in this book about a day may come where we have to trade privacy of our brain to type on social media just to post on facebook or elsewhere we'll have to give away some of those privacy rights of our own brain our own intellectual operation now the brain is the center of what makes us human that's what schwab says and he says to change it affects our definition of human humanity. I'm just quoting here from him so you get a feel for this. To change the ways our minds interact with the world around us. Influence in the brain is more, in, sorry, in more precise ways could change our sense of self. Redefine what it means to have experiences and fundamentally alter what constitutes reality. Brain Science encourages a huge step for human, for humans beyond natural evolution. As I dealt with in part four, 
they are creating the next step of evolution. Now, in this biotechno, uh, sorry, this neurotechnological area, you have brain computer interfaces. Now, I wrote a few years ago about social scientists since the 1980s that they have spoken about a global brain by which all of humanity is going to be interconnected through technology, which is constantly going to be gathering information and increasing in intelligence to become a literal world brain for the entire planet. Each person will be connected to this living brain in the future, feeding it and being fed by it in this new planetary consciousness. If you've got a mobile phone, you're already part of that. You're feeding this global brain. DARPA, our American intelligence, created a thing called LifeLog some years back. There was such an outcry against this research that LifeLog was canceled in 2004. When they start talking about what they are doing with the brain of men, with drugs and technology, they had to stop it. There was such an outcry. However, this work has continued under other proje project names. In 2016, DARPA released limited information that soldiers would have chips uploaded to the brain in order to connect with computers for greater military efficiency. In 2013, President uh, Barack Obama announced a new joint initiative between the US and the EU with the release of the Brain Initiative. That's what they called it. The brain research through advancing innovative neurotechnologies. There you have it. What is the Brain Initiative? It's this that I'm talking about. With an initial grant of 300 million, this new project embarked. And then Obama promised another billion dollars almost and immediately, he did understand what this was about. He understood that initially, maybe they could cure Parkinson's disease, and he rejoiced in that. But he also admitted in his opening speech that the longer term goal in mapping the entire brain in order, was in order to connect the world to computers by the creation of brain 2.0. There are currently seven large uh, brain projects that are operating across our world now, not just America and Europe, there's about several. And each of these is trying to conquer the holy grail of neuroscience, the brain. They're not only after your body, they're after your brain. This is the 2020s. This is it, saints. This is it, friends. I want to tell you. There's also all these different groups and departments and regions joined together in the International Brain Institute. They also have a global uh, neuroethics summit where they all collaborate together. Again, the World Economic Forum in November 2018, let me quote from them. Why we need everyone's input. It is clear by now that brain research has the potential to radically transform how humanity defines itself for good or for bad. For example, we need to reconsider long held assumptions and values like free will and the role of reason in human behavior. At Davos 2020, just at the beginning of last year, one of the talks at Davos with a panel of very interesting speakers. You can listen to it yourself. It was called When Humans Become Cyborgs. And they even dealt with this issue of free will. At what point do you overstep that boundary of free will and impose upon the volition of an individual against their own personal choice? In 2015, Ray Kurzweil, who's worked with Google, he said in the 2030s, nanobots in our brains will make us godlike. Elon, Elon Musk has also been working on the Neuralink and now wants to combine the human brain with technology to make us greater than computers itself. 
This is a search for immortality, to conquer death, to conquer sickness, to become immortal, to become godlike. This has gone on since the Garden of Eden. It's gone on all the way from the Tower of Babel. And now it is here in this Aaron generation. You know that when the serpent came to Eve in the garden, do you know what the Bible says in Genesis 3? He said, if, if you listen to me and take the fruit of the tree, your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods. Eve responded to her. And it says that when she saw the tree, that it was a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit and she gave it to her husband. The word wise there means a new quality of one's thinking, intelligence, to be expert, instructed, prosperous, skillful, successful, insightful, well-taught, full of understanding and prudence. Do you know what the serpent offered Eve was a new form of intelligence through eating of that tree that would make her like God? We are back there again. The third part here is virtual and augmented reality. And you'll find that in chapter 13 of this book. What is this? It's complete new channels to perceive and interact with the world around you. In fact, Schwab calls it the greatest transformation of the fourth industrial revolution. It is how humans experience the world around them. He mentions three areas of reality, virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. What's virtual reality? It is a rich, multi-sensorial, three-dimensional, 360-degree computer simulated environment in which we can immerse ourselves and with which we can interact back and forward. And a person experiences realistic images, sounds, and other sensations that replicate a known environment or create an imaginary one. Do you know what it does? It shuts out the real physical world. It replaces it with a virtual simulated world on a computer. This virtual reality is becoming very real. Why is Schwab, the leader of the World Economic Forum that affects the UN and is affecting all of our world governments now, why is he talking about this three years ago? He's talking about virtual reality here, a whole false realm where you can use this to create a world to be fully immersed in. He also speaks about augmented reality. That's where computer influence enhances the user's perception of reality, like Google Glasses or some other technologies. It just comes in and helps you in your daily life. Then you have mixed realities. That is where they take technology and so merge it with reality. You can hardly distinguish between the, through, between the two. But you know what? He talks about extended reality as well. That's where you take these three realities, join them together with reality, true reality, and it's called extended reality or XR. It's the blending of virtual and real worlds are creating a fully immersive experience. It is blurring the lines between real life and uh, technical life. With advances in neurotechnologies, VR could be controlled from inside the brain. That's what Schwab says. Connecting the brains to these new realities, not on screens or glasses, but internally in the brain. Kids in our generation will live in these virtual realms of unreality. This is what they're trying to create that will be shut down in our homes, living, functioning in an unreal reality, a mixture of drugs, medical, chemical drugs, and also computers and internet. Only 20 years ago, what was in Hollywood is where we are today. The distinction in these realities will disappear by converging them all. The World Economic Forum says the future is virtual. Do you know what they're saying? In these virtual realities where you're merging everything, you're, you're going to have um, avatars come into you 
in other words, entities with intelligence within these realms, they're going to come and communicate with you. They will be intelligent. They will seem like uh, living persons or creatures. And of course, we'll tell ourselves they're not real. It's just a computer screen. But all of this is going to be brought into education. I'm not saying this. It's not a conspiracy theory. They're writing it in all of their books. Oh, listen to me. If you have any doubts about this, I can prove it very easily for you. If you've got any sort of sense whatsoever, this is going to come into the realm of education. You'll stand there in virtual reality teaching history, be taken back to some place in ancient history or the other side of the world. There'll be virtual classrooms. It's going to encroach in jobs, in how you train. It's already happening with flight pilots. It, it'll come into the whole radical medical realm, manufacturing, mil military, social interaction. What we have considered a computer for the past 20 years will change radically. On page 183 in Schwab's book here, listen to what he says. And he's quoting from another author, but he puts it in here. To play God, to create whole worlds, whole universes, atom by atom, pixel by pixel. They dreamed of building worlds in which one can live. One can socialize, one can play, and yet one can create worlds that are so amazing, so inspiring, that they will unleash a new wave of human creativity and allow us to discover a higher level of human performance, creative, immersive experiences of almost supernatural proportions. This is where we are going in the fourth industrial revolution. What I'm giving to you is only a shallow overview. It's taken by quotes from the World Economic Forum and from Klaus Schwab. All of this is being interconnected. And I assure you, they're bringing out more documentation, many different companies, organizations, institutions. It is the internet of the bodies. The, this is big business, and this is where they're going next. But let me finish here. And I could spend an hour on this. In fact, it makes me sick to the stomach. I've, I've been reading this. And I could be really sick, because I'm going to leave you here with something so shocking. I want to bring it more local, more contemporary, I want to place in your hands some solid evidence that what's just about to happen is going to change our whole world. This document in my hand is called Human Augmentation, the dawn of a new paradigm. It is about 100 pages long, and it was released seven, about several weeks ago in May 2021, just several weeks ago. It's been released by the Ministry of Defense. I downloaded this off the UK British government website, and you can do it as well. It was compiled in partnership with the German defenses, also the Swedish and the Finnish. So you have this military defense, Ministry of Defense, in the UK, Sweden, Germany, Finland, working together on this. Listen to what they say. Using technologies to radically enhance human performance. Everything I've just covered is far more explicit in this document. It's about a technical revolution that's going to sweep our world. This entire document lays out what's going to happen in the next 30 years up until 2050 and what is already happening and about to hit us. Quote, future wars will be won not by those with the most uh, advanced technology, but by those who can most effectively integrate the unique capabilities of both people and machines. Listen, human augmentation is the missing part of the puzzle. It would shock you if I had time to go through this, and I don't. I can only give you a few snippets from it, but you'll find 
This is the Ministry of Defense for the British government. And here they have a picture of evolution from an ape, a monkey. The second picture is a man with a mobile phone saying it took a billion years to get there. Now look at the next three steps. You know what the end destination of this is? A chip in the brain. That's what it's all about, transhumanism and what they want to implant in the human brain. In this remarkable document, you can read about brain uh, computer interfaces of changing genetics. They say in here, we cannot wait for ethics to change or morals to change or on uh, those who are religious. We need to act now and governments need to act. Quote, it could be argued that treatments involving novel vaccinations process and gene and cell therapies are already examples of human augmentation already in the pipeline. Human augmentation includes chemical, physical and biological augmentation and the modification of the human. This is an on, and this is what they say, it is an unprecedented opportunity to change humanity. Can you imagine the British government law on this and the Ministry of Defense in Great Britain talking about brain chips, modifying your body, gene uh, editing of the human. In fact, if I just read you a, a, a couple of the things here, <laughs> you, you, you'd be so shocked before I, I let you go. It says creating genetically modified humans has been widely considered unacceptable for many years and it's formally prohibited in over 40 countries. But there are signs that this stance is being challenged by the advent of new technologies. They go through and list all of those various technologies that's going to be changing humanity. We are living in the most remarkable way. They actually say here, what begins with a vaccine is going to quickly move to gene editing. It's all in this book. And then listen to this quote. It says, in a military context, it will be necessary to enhance our troops, to give them protection against a novel threat. Is it moral to have super elite soldiers with human augmentation, but not offering it to one and all? Our moral tendencies to look after our kin and immediate future may no longer be fit for the modern interconnected world. And just one more for you here before I leave you. Human augmentation may challenge or offend religious views and appear to give credence to other belief systems such as transhumanism. Who would ever believe? politics and military would create this. It is here. It really is here. As I close this fifth part of the Great Reset, explaining to you what's happening. And believe me, if you think the past year was fast, it's going to get much faster. They're only beginning. If you think this was a health crisis the past year, you're terribly mistaken. What is coming through the medical profession is what I just shared with you. This is where it's going. This is why it has been happening. Let me say three closing statements to three groups of people. Number one, church leaders or mature Christians are those who lead ministries. I am shocked at how Christian leaders are asleep. They won't speak out, they're blind. Pastors and leaders, especially across Britain, they are sleeping, they refuse to deal with this. Churches will not deal with it. Leaders of ministry are closed lipped They have no prophetic word, no thus saith the Lord from God, no message for this generation. We are on the end, at the edge of the fulfilling of Bible prophecy. It is here. It is all happening around us. And yet so many of you are silent. You are ignorant. You are deliberately blind. If you download this document, you can read it for yourself from the British government website. 
it is time for you church leaders to stop compromising, being scared about your reputation or the legal side of things. It's time for you to lead the body of Christ. We need a revival. And how are we going to have that if you don't wake up? You are an embarrassment to the body of Christ if you're ashamed to deal with this issue. I know you could maybe be ignorant, but if if you're deliberately ignoring this, woe unto you in this hour. We need prophets again in the body of Christ. Let me speak to another group, new Christians. Do you realize how many emails I've had since doing these great reset videos from new born again Christians, many saved out of the new age in the past months, in the past year, in the past three years, most of the church don't realize that God is moving. There are vast multitudes across our world. You young Christians listening to me, you know what I'm saying. You're newly born again. Are you backsliders who've come back to the Lord after 30 years? Some of you new agers used to laugh at God until a year ago, and yet you've got born again and found the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why? This crisis, it's getting too serious. You can't afford to be an evolutionist because this is where evolution leads you. You can't afford to be an atheist. You can't laugh any longer. This Bible is explicit. And what I'm telling you, a year ago, someone laughed at me, or a year and a half ago, six years ago, I couldn't have told people that there's going to be a mark on the right hand, on the forehead, that they're going to penetrate the biology and the brain of men and lead us into a political economic system. As I've always believed from a child, my great parent, grandparents believed this, my grandparents believed this, my parents, because they believed the Bible. I assure you, you young Christians, get on fire for God. Read the Bible. This is the greatest hour in church history. You have been saved for the very last hour. Get on fire, filled with the Holy Spirit. It's time to preach the gospel. You have come to the kingdom of God for the last hour of church history. It is a terrible hour, a dark hour. Oh, but it's exciting. It's a glorious hour. I'm so excited in this hour because I get to preach the gospel at this time when it's all happening in front of our eyes. Third and lastly, may, maybe you don't know Jesus. You're an atheist. You're an evolutionist, but you're listening to me. But you know what's going on. Your eyes are more open than most of the church, many of you. You're, you're, you're more concerned you, you have more insight. You, you're more careful. And I respect you for that. But I want to tell you, I'm praying that you meet the Lord Jesus Christ. This isn't religion. I met the Lord Jesus Christ. He forgave me. He changed my life. I've got no time for religion or hypocrisy, false teachings. But you know what? You need to wake up and realize evolution was a lie from the pit of hell. Evolution was a trap that Huxley and all of these men have used, globalist governments, this is where it's leading, and you're going to see it for yourself. If you're standing against all of this confusion, you're going to be forced either to bow the knee and become a part of the system or to get born again. You're only going to have two choices in this last hour. And I pray if I can ever help you, you don't know Jesus or you're skeptical about the Bible. If I can ever help you to find the Lord Jesus in a real way. I don't play games with people. This, this is a last hour. This is make or break. The genie is out of the bottle, but I want to tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. It is the last hour of time. Look up for your redemption cometh. I, I just pray this is uh, alerts you, uh, maybe alarms you, but it'll revive you and stir you afresh. God bless you today. I'm going to come back with a few others. I need a break now. I've had a busy five months. Um, and I, I'm about to go into a three-week Bible school. I've got so much to say. I'll try and keep the next uh, couple of videos shorter, but um, I've got so much to say. I could keep you here for about 10 hours straight out just talking to you. I really pray um, this gives you a bit of insight. You that have been skeptical and think things are going back to normal, time to wake up. Wake up before it's too late. God bless you.